All right, in today's video then, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up where we left off with uh, from the sine extend to zero extend um, and talk more about arithmetic. Uh, particularly, we're gonna talk through how to use multiplication and division um, with uh, with our sin assembly, with the instructions. Um, just as a refresher then, uh, when we deal with zero extend sine extend, what we're worried about is when we're taking data um, and we're moving it from a smaller to a larger destination. You know, maybe we're making it from a byte to a word uh, or a byte to a double word or something. And in particular, what we're concerned about then is when we, when we take that number, do we need to extend that sine bit? Remember, recall that the sine bit is the most significant bit of the month of the number. And so when a number is stored in two's complement, we look at that most significant bit. If it's a one, it's negative. If it's a zero, it's a positive number. Um, and so if we move that number, you know, something smaller into something larger, if we don't extend that sign bit, then we'll lose the signage of that number. We'll, we'll lose the, the original value here. We'll, we'll take a look at that in just a moment. Um, so sign extend, what the sign extend does is it looks at that most significant bit and then it extends that bit, whether it's a zero or a one, um, into all of the bits uh, of that larger location, that larger register that we're moving into. Um, zero extend then doesn't do that. Zero extend just simply zero um, extends zero into that register. So um, looking at uh, the, the arithmetic then, um, let's say that we have, and this is an example that you'll find in the book. Um, let's say that we're going to add these two numbers here. All right, so we've got we've got this operation right here, and so we have these two numbers. Uh, we know that um, each hex digit is four bits because that's the most that we can represent with with four bits is, is all the possible hex digits. Um, so two hex digits is eight bits. So this would be two bytes here. We know one byte, one byte, so two bytes. Um, so we have a sixteen bit value. Uh, if we look at this number then, we can see that because these are all f's, if this is in two's complement, we know that this would be a negative value. And so if we wanted to go through and, and create that conversion, we could do that. We could write all the bits down, uh, flip all of them, add one, um, and you could see that that would be a negative one. That would be the value here. Um, and so what happens when we do this addition? Right? We're essentially doing addition with a negative number, and so we have 2c plus or minus one, and we get a value of 2b. Uh, what happened though is because of the way that this addition worked, uh, we ended up with a carry. And so we can see, and you'll, you'll notice this when we do the example from our program, uh, is that we'll start looking at the flags register and we'll see that the, the carry flag was set in this operation. Now, this is 16 bits, right? So we can move these, this data into two 16-bit registers and do the addition, and we'll get this result. But what happens if we tried to do the same addition with the larger register, right? Let's say that this was in, um, we extended this into a 32-bit. Well, we move these values here, which would be no problem, but if we didn't properly sign extend, um, we'd add four zeros there, and the result of this operation would be much different. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so first thing we'll do is we'll move into AX, uh, the value, and I've already forgotten what it was, <laughs> 2C, and then we'll move into BX, the value 0, FF, FF, hex. All right, and we'll do that with this one as well. Uh, we put the H behind it to indicate that we're using that this is a hex value. Um, we put the zero in front of this because if we didn't, then the assembler would get confused and might treat that as a, as a label or a variable name. And so whenever we use um, a hexadecimal number and we're use one in the actual alphabetic characters uh, as, a, as a value, immediate value, then we need to put that zero in front of it. Okay, um, so now we'll go ahead and we'll add. So we'll say we'll add to AXBX and we'll dump the registers and we'll see what we get here as a value. Uh, I'm going to comment this out because we're going to talk about those in just a moment. Okay, apparently I was too slow again. All right, so there we go. So what did we get for the outcome? 002B. And we see 
that the carry flag is set. So this is the space when we do dump regs with this particular program, um, with the library that we're including here, uh, this is the space where we'll see that those flags and those flags are set. Remember that flags or e-flags is just a register. And so it's going to have a series of those bits. They can either be set or unset. They can either be one or zero. And then this library helps by looking at that particular bit and then printing off the, the value that it represents, printing off whether or not the, the, the carry flag is set or not. Um, so you can see that that carry flag is set. Now, we did addition AXBX. And so we know that when we do that, the result is going to be stored in AX. This is the, this is the source. This is the destination. And so we're adding these two values together and storing it in this destination. So we can see that the result is stored 002B. All right. And the rest of this, so the upper 16 bits of this register, um, is, is data that was used from something else from pre previous execution before we got into our code. And so we don't know what that value is. And so we need to be careful because we only use two 16-bit registers here. If we needed to use that result, we would only want to use the, the value of AX. If we used EAX after, um, after the result of this operation, we'd have a problem, right? Because we'd have additional data here. The value of EAX as a register in whole is much different than the value of just AX. Okay, um, well, let's say that we change that and we say that EAX add EAX to EBX. All right, well, what have we just done? Well, let's look at the result first. Okay, so let's move that, or let's change that up a little bit. Let's say that instead of using those 16 registers, we move into EAX to CX, and we move into EBX, our same value, X, um, but now we do an add EAX, EBX, and then we'll dump the registers here. Uh, let's see what happens there. Okay, and here's our result in EAX. Uh, you can see that value um, is different. You know, I mean, it, it, we get the 2B, uh, but there's that carry. And instead of having um, it overflow, you can see that the, the carry flag is no longer set because we have the register space in order for that carry to kind of show up as a part of the number. Um, but it also changes the value because now if we look at EAX as, you know, the total of that result of that operation, um, it's a different value than just 002B. Uh, so we can, we can, of course, look at that in a calculator and I can say uh, 2C plus FFFF, you can see there's a result, uh, of course, in decimal, 65,579, uh, and that's a lot different than the previous, which would have been uh, the negative you know, 2B, so from 2C to 2B. Um, and we can look at what that is, go back to hex, uh, 2B, and decimal is 43. Right, so we just have to be careful. Uh, have to be careful with the size of the of the, uh, the registers that you use, and that when you move a, a value from a lower to a larger, um, that you do the appropriate extension if you need to do it. Okay, so uh, I'm going to comment these dump regs out as we go, just to help keep a little bit of the clutter out of our terminal here. Uh, the next little bit of code uh, that we're going to look at, and what we're going to start talking about then, is multiplication. And what happens with multiplication is that it gets just a little bit less straightforward in a way. So what we have then uh, is we have the mole command. And what we have to be, we have, we'll have two multiplication commands that we're going to talk about, mole and imole. And so mole is for unsigned arithmetic, for unsigned numbers. What we have is this table here, and this table then tells us how we can use multiplication. You can see that there's nothing in destination and there's nothing in source. And the reason that is, is because when we look at the IML command, IML you'll be able to use operands in those columns. And so when we look at these tables, we're gonna know how we can call the mole function molar IML. Um, since there are, there's nothing in those, those two columns, then we can only call the multiplication command with a source. And so what you'll see when we, when we actually type this instruction out, as we'll have multiplication plus a source. So multiplication EAX or mole EBX or mole uh, BL or mole BX. 
right? The source, which is going to be this operand here, is going to be either a register or a memory location. And so the other thing you'll notice with this is that we can't do what's called an immediate value. Uh, I can't say mole and then a value of eight, right? We'll get a syntax error if we try to do that. Um, the size of this source then depends on where the result's going to be stored. And that's what this column right here is telling us. So what we're looking at then is we're looking at where this is going to be, where is the source? Where is the destination? Where is the data going to be stored after the operation? So AX equals AL times source. DX AX um, equals AX times source. That should be an equal sign there. It's kind of hard to see. Um, EDX EAX equals EAX times source. And so what we have to look at then in order to know where the result is being stored is we have to look at the, at the source. So if the source is 8 bits, so it's an AL or an AH, um, then it's AL times that source, so it's 8 bit times 8 bit, and that'll be stored in AX. And the reason why is because when you take 8 bits times 8 bits, the maximum you can get is a 16 bit value. Same with AX. If our source is a 16 bit, then we take 16 bits implicitly times the source of 16 bits, um, and we can store that value in DX AX, right? Because 16 times 16, the most we can get is a 32-bit number. Now, what throws people off a little bit is that we're not storing this in a 32-bit register. We're storing it across two different registers. And so when you see this notation, um, DX colon AX, that means that we're using DX and AX. And particularly, what we're doing is we're using DX for the most significant bits and AX for the least significant bits. And so when you look at that result, um, let's say that we read, kind of read the number from left to right like we normally do. We would start in DX, we'd read those bits, and then we'd read the rest of AX, right? So DX is your most, is your most significant bits, and AX will be your least significant, okay? And then that pattern continues if we have the source being a 32-bit value. So if it's 32-bit, we take it times EAX, and then the value, the result, is stored across all of EDX and all of EAX, right? So the source determines what we're multiplying by. If the source is 8 bits, we multiply by AL. If the source is 16, we multiply by AX. And if the source is 32, we multiply by EAX. Now, the other thing you'll notice that when we, when we work with the mole command, this is we can't change where we're storing. We can't change what we're multiplying by, right? It's always going to be a portion of the EAX register times the source. The source is the only thing that we provide in the command, and the result is always going to be stored in these locations. So that's one of the limitations with multiplication, or with the mole command. Okay, let's take a look at a couple examples then. Of course. If anyone knows of a way for that to not happen, please share it with me, because um, that gets annoying. Also, if anyone can figure out my password based off of my keystrokes, let me know, because I'd be interested to know if you can. Okay. So let's try this again. Okay, first thing that I'm going to do um, is let's change these values a little bit here. Um, so I'm going to do something a little bit simpler. We'll start with something like 2 times 3. Um, and in hex, and then we'll multiply those values. So we'll say AL times, or no, I'm sorry, that's an addition, we're not gonna do any addition here. Uh, we can multiply by BL, okay? And then we'll dump breaks. Um, what you'll notice also, and let me know if this doesn't actually help you, but what I'm gonna do, and uh, I, I think this makes it, to me it always makes it a little bit clear, more clear what's happening in those registers. Um, you know, sometimes, and, and you saw that earlier, when we when we dump a register, when we run a program, um, data gets left behind oftentimes. And so we dump the registers before we've used them and we don't know what's in there. Um, so instead of zeroing out, this would be much like zeroing it out, um, I'm just going to move all Fs in there. And so that way this register EAX is full of Fs. So that way you'll see that when we move into AL2, um, that the rest of that register will still be set. So I think it makes it, to me, it makes it a little bit clearer. I guess it's the same thing about zeroing it out. Um, just to make it clear what's happening, what portion of the register that we're using and where that result's being stored. Um, we're looking at this value. So we're gonna move into AL2, we're gonna move into BL3, 
So we're using 8 bits, so a byte. Um, so where would the result be stored? Well, the result's going to be stored, um, you know, byte times byte could equal 16 bits. So the result's going to be stored in AF, AX. And so we want to look at that value. What we'll see then after this, these, these instructions are executed, um, that we'll have AX be set to something, right? The result. So it should be 0006. All right, and there's our result, all right? So even though I set all these bits to one, after the operation, after we did mole by BL, because we could potentially get a 16-bit value, AX is set to six. Okay, I'll do the same thing. And now let's move into AX, a value of 100 hex, and move into BX, a value of 200 hex, and then let's mole by BX. Okay. So our source is a 16-bit register. So we're going to use AX for the other operand in this multiplication. And then we're going to store the value um, in DX AX. Remember, DX AX is where we're going to store that result. It took me a second to see that. There was my mistake. Okay, so 100 times 200. There's our result, 0002, and EAX has 0000. Okay, we can get out the calculator just to make sure that that result does in fact make sense. So I'll go ahead and clear. And if we take 100 times 200, we get 20,000 hex. So those lower four bits, that would be AX. Uh, I'm sorry, those lower four bytes would be AX, um, or two bytes, excuse me. Uh, and then we'd have two. So uh, four, these 16 bits are set AX and zero. Um, and then these are our DX. Those are our most significant bits. So if we're reading this number from left to right, as we do, we'd start in DX, and then we'd read AX, right? And so there's our result. Okay, now let's say that we move into EAX, a slightly larger value. Same thing, mobile EBX. And where is the result stored? EDX, EAX, because this is a 32 bit register. Okay, so there we go. Lowest, those are the least significant bits, they're all zero. Most significant bits are all set. Uh, we have a six, so um, we could look at that result of that operation. times okay so one two three four five six seven eight all right so these lower bits all of this these zeros represent eax and this above that would represent edx right and we could even look at this on the calculator here using the actual bits uh, we can see um, that on this number these are the lower 32 bits here and then these are the upper 32 bits. And so if we look at this, you know, the binary on this calculator, we can actually look at this as EDX and this would be EAX. And so if we look at the results, we can see that is exactly what we have. EAX is all zeros and EDX is our value of six. Okay, and let's see, so I'll just make a note here. EDX, EAX is the result. All right, so again, it all depends on what we're multiplying by. 32-bit, 16-bit, 8-bit, that determines the registers that we're going to register, registers that we're going to use in order to store that actual result. OK, 
Okay, um, here's another example. And what you'll find is probably questions similar to this on the quiz and, and definitely on the midterm. And what this is trying to test is you can see that we're putting some value in all of the general purpose registers. So EAX through EDX is going to have a value moved into it. And then we're going to do a multiplication command. And so what you're what you're you're trying to identify here is what changes. What what register is changed after this mole instruction? Because if you understand that, then you understand what we're multiplying by um, and how that result is being stored. So if BL is 8-bit, right, it's a lower part of one of those 16-bit registers. In this case, it's the lower 8 bits of um, BX. Um, when we multiply by 8, uh, 8 bits times 8 bits, we can get up to a 16-bit value. And so the result is going to be stored in AX. And so that's the register that's going to be changed. The rest of these will be untouched. Right, because we've moved those values in, the results of the multiplication only touches the AX register. Now, if this was a larger value, let's say we use a larger register, right, then potentially we could modify EDX and EAX, or portions thereof. And so that's really what a question like this is trying to determine that you understand. So um, let's go ahead and move those values. Uh, go ahead and run through this as an example. So we'll move mole by BL, and then we'll dump the registers. I better move quick, otherwise I'll lose my terminal again. And there we go. So we moved into AX02 hex, right? That value's gone because we used that portion of the register, AX, for the result. Uh, we moved into EBX108, that value's still there. Uh, we moved into ECX3, that value's still there. We moved into EDX4, and that value's still there as well. And so since we only multiplied by 8 bits, we had AX as the result, where this result's going to be stored. So after the mole instruction, AX was the only register that was changed. So hopefully that is making sense. All right, so the next instruction that we have when it comes to multiplication is IMOL. And what you get with IMOL then is the ability to multiply by sign numbers. And so that's going to be the biggest differentiator, differentiator between the two, excuse me, uh, is the signed and unsigned. Um, There we go, signed and unsigned. Right. The other thing that you're going to notice is in the previous slide, we looked at the table, and that table stopped about right here. And so those were that was the portion of the table that we were looking at for the mole command. Uh, with IMOL, you can do the same. You, so you can do IMOL and the exact same setup that we had before, right? Times the source. The source has to be a register or memory location, and it's going to be 8, 16, or 32 bits. But in addition to that, we have all these, these additional um, instructions. And so now what we can do with IMOL is we can say we can define the destination, right? With MOL, everything went into EAX or, or, or a portion of that EAX register. But with IMOL, we can define the, the, the destination. Uh, we can define source, source 1, and source 2 as well. And so uh, depending on then, when you look at the instruction, the number of operands, that's how you have to read this table. So let's say, for example, that I have IMOL, EAX, EBX, right? We have two operands. And so if we're not sure how that command is working, then we have to go to this table. And, and where is the only place that we have two operands? Well, it's this column right here, right? Destination and source. This would be one. And this would be three. So this is the only part in the table where we have two. So we know then that EAX is this is going to be the destination, right? And then the second part, EBX, is going to be source one. So EBX, that's a 32-bit register. So we can see that we have register memory 32-bit. So that's our source. And now we can look at the action and see that the destination is going to be multiply equal times source one. So what we're getting is EAX times EBX, and then we're storing that value in EAX, right? Um, to read this bottom grouping then, uh, what you can have is uh, destination source one, source two. And so let's say that we have IMOL, you know, EDX, ECX, EAX, right? And now we're looking at, here's the destination, here's source one, and then here's source two. And so we'd read, we'd read in this table three operands, and we'd have source one times source two being stored in the destination, right? And so we can multiply two registers 
um, and put them in a different location other than EAX. Uh, the other thing that you'll notice now with IMOL, um, with the previous, we could not use an immediate value. And what I mean by immediate value is like a hard-coded value. Um, we couldn't say something like mol8. That would generate a syntax error because that's, that's illegal. Uh, if you look at what we use for the mol, it has to be a register or a memory location. Um, but now we have these all these things that say immediate, immediate 8, immediate 8, immediate 16, immediate 32. Um, and what that is telling us is that we can do things, right, like this would be uh, illegal, so let's put an X there, but we can do something with IMOL, and anywhere that we're allowed to do an immediate, um, we could say something like you know, IMOL EAX, oops, oops sorry about that, um, 8. And so we can use those immediate values or a hard-coded value. Right, so that makes it a, a little bit different as well. So we just have a lot more flexibility when it comes to working with the IMOL instruction. Um, let's see. So let's take a look at an example. Uh, IMOL with two operands. So if we have, we move into EBX A and we move into ECX A, and then we IMOL EBX with ECX, what is the result? Well, we have, it's very similar to that last example, we have two operands. So if we go back to this table, this is the only section right here where we previously looked at where we have two operands. So we know that we're going to take, because that's a 32-bit value, um, and we're using two registers. We're going to be using this one right here. So our destination is going to be EBX. Right? So that's our destination. This is going to be source one. And so what we're doing is we're taking EBX times ECX, and we're storing that in EBX. So that's going to be the result of that operation. So we can go ahead and do that real quick. sure what's going on here. I must be getting a little bit of internet activity issues. Or something's wrong with DS Unix. Goodness. There we go. Alright, so there we go. Um, we can see uh, that the result, so if we took A times A in hex, uh, and we can, again, we can do that with our calculators just to make sure that what we're looking at is in fact correct. So A times A equals 64. Okay, I said that the destination is EBX. So if we look at the output here, here's EBX, and here is our value 64. So looks like everything matched up. All right, so here's another example. Uh, in this case, we're going to be working a little bit here with two's complement. So again, um, look at this value, and what number is this? And let me get my pointer back on. Oops. Okay. All right, so remember the zero here isn't part of this value. Uh, it's simply to not allow the, the assembler to get confused with the fact that this is a hex number. All right, so we're using this hex as an immediate value. So we can see that all these these are these leading bytes are Fs, and so uh, we know that the most significant bit is going to be set, and uh, so that that means it's a negative value. Um, if we do the conversion, uh, which you should be able to do, 
then what we would have is uh, we'd have 1111 and then A, which is 1010. And because all these Fs, all these leading bytes are the same, we can just kind of ignore those. So there's, you know, there's the additional ones there. Uh, we convert, so we flip all the bits, and then we add one. After we do that, so now we have zero. Here, I'm going to move this up. I'm just I'm afraid that's going to get cut off if I'm not careful. So let me go ahead and just move everything up a little bit. Okay, so here's our one of our Fs. Here's A. We flip all the bits. Now we add one. So zero, one. 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and so forth. So what is this value? 1, 2, 4, 8. So 4 and 2, so that equals a negative 6. Okay, so we have a negative 6. We're going to move into ECX2. Um, so a negative 6 times 2, so we'd have a negative 12 um, as our result. Um, let's see. Uh, and then where is the result stored? So just like the previous example, because we only have two operands, uh, we know that the result is going to be stored in EBX right here. Okay, so uh, what would the result look like then? Well, if we know that that value is going to be um, a 12, again, we can just grab a calculator here to make sure that what we're doing is correct. So let's stay in hex mode and we'll do a negative six times two equals C, right? And if we think about that, A uh, is 10, B is 11, and C is 12, right? So we know that we're good to go there. So C equals 12. So what is C? Remember, it's, we had negative 12 though. So in order to store that, we'd have to do two's complement. So the first thing we do is we'd write down what is 12. So uh, 8 and 4 is 12. Now we have to flip all the bits. And then we add 1. Okay, so that's going to be an F. And that's going to be 1, 2, 4. F4. So well, we're looking for the result of this operation to be um, a bunch of Fs because it's a negative number and 4. Okay, so let's just go ahead and see if that's the result that we get. Okay. Okay, you can see I already filled out the uh, that inst those uh, those instructions, and we're storing the value in EBX, and sure enough, uh, there's our result. So EBX equals all Fs and then a four, which is which is what I said we'd come up with. All right, the next thing we'll talk about then is the divide. So we've got div and idiv, and uh, very similar to mole and imole, and that is that we have unsigned and signed division. Um, we'll just take a look at the div, since uh, you'll see that the operation is, is relatively similar. Um, what we're looking at then is uh, div, so the div command, and then the source. And much like we had with the multiplication, um, a lot of the how the the output, the result, where it's going to be stored, is going to be is going to depend on the size of the source. So uh, let's see here. Let me start my slideshow again. So if we look at um, the division, and let's say that we use an 8-bit value. So our source is going to be an 8-bit value. Uh, what we're going to do then is we're going to divide AX by that 8-bit source, right? So this would be 8 bits. Uh, the quotient is going to be stored in AL, and the remainder is going to be stored in AH. Um, if we change that to a 16-bit, so our source is a 16-bit value. We use DX AX, quotient stored in AX, remainder stored in DX. Right? And so we have to be careful when we're, when you're looking at doing a division that if you divide by a 16-bit that you have both DX and AX set up correctly. Um, if you move a value into EAX or AX and then you divide by a 16-bit and, and you don't have DX zeroed out, um, you may get 
an improper result. You may get an incorrect result because there might have been something, some values in dx that ended up getting used in your division. Um, same thing with the 32-bit. So if we divide by a 32-bit source, we use all of edx and all of eax in order to do the division. So edx, dx being the most significant bits, eax, ax being the lowest significant bits, and then the remainders, so the remainder in the quotient is going to be stored in these registers corresponding. Um, this also means that when once the division is done, that we have the, the number that we're dividing by, right? that gets overwritten because we're storing in those same registers the result of the operation. Right, so those numbers get overwritten. Okay, let's take a look at a couple examples. Oops, I needed. Okay, so the first thing that we'll do, um, you'll see that I'm going to zero out those registers. So just have an XOR command, XOR EX, XOR EBX, because those will be the two registers that I'll be using. Um, so go ahead and I, and I zero those out to make sure that there's no problems with any of the divisions that we do. Um, let's say that we move into, um, into AX a value of 10 hex, and then we move into uh, BL a value of 2 hex, and now we div by BL, and now we'll dump our registers. So what do we get for a for output here, for results anyway. All right, well, remember, we're, we're dividing by an 8-bit value. So if we go back and look, we'll see that that divides by AX. So that's why I move that value into AX. Our quotient should be in AL and our remainder in AH. So we we'll look at the results of that. Quotient is in AL. All right, so 0, 8. And the remainder is in AH. All right, and that looks correct because... Um, move this over a little bit. Uh, that's 10 hex, so 10 hex divided by 2 is 8 with no remainder. All right, so that so that added up. That worked out correctly. Okay, uh, now let's say that I want to move into um, eax, the value 100 hex, uh, and I move into uh, bx, the value 2 hex, and now we divide by bx and dump the regs. Right, what do we get for a result? Okay, uh, floating point exception. So I did something wrong. Right, so if you get this, if you get this, uh, this error here, then you did something wrong in your and how you you set up your instruction here. Um, so what did I do? Well, let's see. Um, I moved into ex 100 hex. Uh, I moved into BX 2 hex, and then I try to divide. Uh, likely what happened is I didn't XOR out EDX. I didn't clear out EDX, because remember, um, I'm going to be using a 16-bit value. And so now that I'm using a 16-bit value, if our source is 16-bit, we use DX and AX, not EAX. And so um, what I could have done, maybe made this a little bit more clear, is say, uh, let's XOR DX and with dx, so that zeroes out dx, let's move 100 into ax, and then 2 into bx, and then do the division. All right, and now we probably get a much better answer. Um, okay, where are the results stored? Quotient's in ax, remainder's in dx. So if the quotient is in ax, uh, we're looking at ax for our quotient, so 80, okay, and the remainder is in dx which is all zero. So again, it looks like we had a uh, good operation there. So you just got to pay attention to that. Uh, and then finally, uh, again, same thing here now, just moving to 32-bit. Uh, if we XOR those two registers, just to clear them out to make sure that we don't have any problems. Um, if we move into EAX, uh, let's just put in there a large value. And then we move into EBX. And now we div by EBX. The only thing that really changes here is the fact that we have, for our results being stored, um, we have all of EAX and then all of EDX, right? And so we have quotient as well as a remainder. Uh, and so if you're not sure, you just need to go back and take a look at these, um, you know, at this chart. Uh, take a look at the book and just keep in mind where things are stored. That's probably the only thing that gets a little bit tricky with division um, is just what registers, you know, what portions of the registers are we using depends on the source, and then where are those, you know, where are the results being stored? 
Um, here's an example, another thing that you're going to see on the quiz and you'll definitely see on the, uh, the midterm exam. Um, and again, it's much like the multiplication one. We're just looking at this in a way that we, so we can understand that when we do the division, what is, how is it working? What registers are we using? What registers are we overwriting? Um, and so being able to look at if we put values in all of the general purpose registers and then we do div ECX, what would the result be and where would it be stored? Right? And then here I, I, you can see that I went through and put the answers um, because we're dividing by ECX. So we're using EDX, EAX, and then we're going to store. Um, so looking at the actual division itself. So we're going to divide um, two hex. That's going to be what we divide with. And our value is going to be EDX and EAX. And so we have zero for EDX and zero F zero for EAX. So that would be, um, you know, zero F zero divided by two would be, uh, what we're looking for as far as the, 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 the values in our operation here, our division. And then this is going to be stored. The quotient is in EAX and the remainder is in EDX. Right? So EAX is going to contain the quotient and EDX is going to chain, contain the remainder. Um, if the result of this operation does not have a remainder, then it's going to remain unchanged. In this case, it's unchanged because it's zero. Um, if this was something different, but it resulted in a zero remainder, then it would change. It would become a zero. So this is just there to test on, make sure that you understand what's happening in those divisions. So um, that's all I've got for today. Uh, go through the examples. Hopefully the quizzes help to just reinforce and give some good practice there. If you have any questions or anything I said that wasn't clear, please let me know. Otherwise, uh, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Thanks.